my name is Miguel Angel Fernandez. I'm a data scientist, and I'm working as analytics specialist at Vitergia. And thank you, Diane, for the great introduction. And well, they, this talk is going to be a little bit less technical than the previous talks. Uh, it's amazing to be here with, with all of you. And we are talking about the OpenShift project and the rest of Cloud Native ecosystem. And we are talking about some uh, projects and how they are connected, OK? So we are talking first about a quick overview about CNCF ecosystem. And we are going to see some, some of the numbers for some of the projects there. We are going to talk about representing this ecosystem and how we do imagine this ecosystem of projects. Oh, yes. <laughs> OK, sorry about that. After two years, I don't get used to. <laughs> OK, OK, so this is a kind of a shock to, to see my face. Um, OK, so next is to talk about the people acting as bridges. And, uh, and then we will going to discuss the growth of CNCF ecosystem. OK, so first is uh, I wanted to make uh, to show you a quick overview for the CNCF ecosystem. You know that um, cloud native ecosystem has many different projects and they are grouped into different categories, right? So I wanted to, to get OpenShift project and then other CNCF projects, those are um, tagged uh, as um, graduated at incubating projects. If you go to CNCF website, you will see them listed, right? Those on the upper side are graduated ones and the ones below are incubating projects. So this whole presentation is going to show some data extracted from um, git commits, right? So these are code contributions to these projects from the last year, okay? So from May 2021 to May 2022, okay? So we have uh, over 11K contributors active during the last year, plus 85 organizations involved, more than 55 projects and ton of repos, uh, over 171K commits, right? So these are some impressive numbers. So the next question I want to raise is how do we imagine an ecosystem of projects like this? We are talking about these amazing tools and amazing um, projects and how powerful they are. But we always uh, talk about them like this, right? They are each project, individual project. And we tend to talk about projects as a set of repositories, right? And well, for a data, uh, analyst uh, to go for the cloud native ecosystem is like kind of a play a playground, right? It's, uh, um, so if we represent this ecosystem as a set of repositories, we might think something about this. These are representing projects. Each cluster is a is a project, and the nodes linked to each project represent the repositories with activity during the last year. Okay, code activity. I'm not taking about issues, not talking about pull requests or comments. We are focusing on code contributions, right? All right. So we have some isolated clusters. We don't see any uh, anything related between projects, but of course they, they do share a common space because they, they belong to the same ecosystem, right? And we can focus on some of them. Okay, we have OpenShift here with a lot of repositories active during the last year. We have Kubernetes there. We have Cubebird. We talked about that before. Operator Framework and Istio and Knative. HCCD, right? And it's nice. OK, but I will propose to change the point of view because uh, we are talking about open source communities. We are talking about communities. And communities are made of people, right? So what if we take those projects, right? But we try to link those projects having common contributors. We are talking about people. So let's set the people at the center of our problem, which is representing a, an ecosystem, right? If we take these projects and we link them with, uh, because they have common contributors, we will, we will end up having something like this. Not isolated clusters, but this beautiful mess which is all the projects connected with each other, right? OK, so projects are linked if they have common people contributing to them. And that's why we, we see a, this highly connected network. So the reality 
will be quite different depending on how we represent it, right? And as I said, it's all about people. So let's get, uh, we saw this project which are connected and now let's represent the people contributing to these projects and link them with the projects they are contributing to, okay? And when we get, it's this network. I think this is a more accurate representation of the community behind the CNCF ecosystem, okay? Because it's the people who is uh, forming the, the projects, right? It's, it's, it's almost like a, a living entity, it's, it's breathing, like it's a creature. It's, uh, there are connections, there are interactions, right? Okay, and well, we have this beautiful network, but it's hard to, to see uh, something meaningful out of it. Uh, so let's focus on some projects, okay? Let's reduce the scope a little bit. Okay, and we have this network here. Uh, I, I have selected a, a subset of the repositories and we have their Kubernetes and OpenShift. Well, the projects I, I pointed before, right? So the, the, the buckets, the blue buckets at the center, they are the projects and the pink, uh, pink nodes represents contributors. So each node is a, is a human contributor. We are excluding uh, both accounts. In automated accounts, we are excluding them from from this, uh, all these graphs, okay, and these numbers. Okay, I wanted to stress this kind of clusters that are formed between projects. This is, this is important, right? Um, we, if we have a look, a closer look at how the net is represented, we are going to see more of these groups of nodes sharing connections between projects, okay? And this is no less than people acting as bridges between projects. Let's zoom in a little bit. So at the bottom we have OpenShift, this is like a zoom in. We have OpenShift and then we have Kubernetes and on the left we will have Canadian and Istio and then we have Operator Framework and ATCD. And you see here at the center a big group of people. And identifying who these people are is crucial to understand the community and the dynamics uh, between the projects, right? Uh, you may find some connections that you think are expected, but also you can find unexpected connections. I think that's, that's nice also. And if we, well, if, you, if we zoom into uh, another part of the, of the network, also interesting, interesting enough, um, before Istio applied to, be, uh, to become a CNCF project, right, in this year back in April, right? This is for the last year, so the interesting part is that there were already common contributors with other CNCF projects, right? So this is not like, like that, and Istio became a part of the image we saw before. It, it's not just another box. It's a group of people coming together, and they were already collaborating with each other. Yeah, we can see also nodes contributing to not only two, but maybe three projects or more, right? And this is for the last year, again. Okay. Okay, and then we can talk now a little bit about the growth of the project. And in this case, uh, we are showing uh, numbers for OpenShift. So we are focusing on, on the number of uh, Git contributors, so people contributing code monthly for the last uh, five years. So we see that back in 2017, there were already like 200 unique contributors there active, and this is representing monthly, monthly for the last five years. And by the end of 2021, we end up with almost, well, uh, I think over 700 unique contributors for OpenShift. And what we can do also is to compare this data with the other projects we saw in the network before, right? So we have OpenShift along with Kubernetes and the rest of the projects we commented before, we, we see that OpenShift and Kubernetes take, takes the, uh, the, bigger, the greater amount of, of active contributors um, for each month. And what happens if we compare OpenShift with the rest of CNCF projects we saw at the beginning, those graduated and incubated? Okay, we have these numbers of contributors and OpenShift still a big part of, of the ecosystem. Right? 
and the growth. You, you, can see, you can see the growth, basically. OK, and well, um, again, the projects are those that uh, we, we saw before already. Um, well, to finish this presentation, basically, uh, we'd like to show you this graph to compare how the network of projects, people and projects, looked like back in 2017, right? And then, of course, how it looks now. You can see the growth. You can see, so the question now is how this ecosystem will evolve. And the only way, of course, is to build a connected future. You can see all is about human interaction. And it will be really, really uh, exciting to, to see how it happens in the future. And I think that's it from my side. Thank you all for your attention. If you have any questions, I'll be around. Yeah. So what I, I love about this slide is, uh, if you know me, I've thrown this um, variation up on the screen at a bazillion different things. But this really shows you how we're not working in isolation. You know, that it is the communication between the projects and between all the people, the people who are acting as bridges between them, that we really need to help um, cultivate good communication skills and trust between things so that we can align our roadmaps, our feature releases, and the interdependencies. And so when you're working on your project and you think you're all alone, um, trust me, you're not. Um, and we can always help you find a connection and make you feel a little bit more connected to the rest of the cloud native ecosystem. So I really can't tell you how much um, I lean on and lean in on the Batergia folks. And I, I hope you all will do so as well. So thanks um, very much, Miguel, for all of your help. Thank you so much. All right. Pleasure.